so what is up? Uh, this is Ninja Geek, and in episode three, I'm going to carry out a quick review on two Kickstarter games that have currently caught my attention. Uh, when it comes to Kickstarter campaigns, I do research quite thoroughly, and this time I thought I would um, share my short thoughts with um, with you. Um, so I've saved two. Um, however, I'm only back in one of the games. Uh, in the past, I have backed uh, Dark Souls, Z War 1, Damnation and Exodus, Lifeform, Gloomhaven, Barbarians, Invasion, Edge of Darkness, Warm Walkgate, to name a few. So quite a mix of light and heavy games. And the two I'm looking at are, are vastly um, different from each other. Uh, the first one has taken over 5.5 million pounds with nearly 50,000 backers at the time of this video. And of course, I'm talking about Frosthaven. And who hasn't heard of its successful predecessor, Gloomhaven? Uh, Frosthaven is set in the same world as Gloomhaven and is a standalone game of, of great magnitude. And if you own Gloomhaven, you can also bring in your existing characters um, into the Frosthaven Haven campaign. It does appear to be a reskin of Gloomhaven, but is that really a bad thing? Well, let's see. Uh, Frosthaven gameplay remains largely the same. You select two cards and you use the top ability of one and the bottom of the other. You modify your attack deck with a, a, um, uh, a modifier deck. Um, you can collect loot, kill stuff. You've got a leveling up system. Does that seem about right? No, I like Gloomhaven and I like it a lot. Uh, this gameplay system works and works well. And so what if it is a, a reskin? You know, think um, Pandemic, Iberia, Reign of Cthulhu, Rising Tide, Pandemic Legacy Season 1 and 2. Get my point? Uh, now, I'm only about 25 scenarios into Gloomhaven, but the thought of another 70 scenarios followed by another 100 more from Frosthaven is, is quite daunting. And there is only so many kill all enemy scenarios um, that I can do. I do hope this has been rectified with additional objectives and goal in the Frosthaven campaign. And so for me, why does Frosthaven stand out? Well, firstly, take a look at the map. It's, it's gorgeous. Whereas in Gloomhaven, it was largely tan and brown with, with pastel green areas. This one shows a settlement outpost uh, nestled in snow-capped mountains that then lead to a, a frozen shore. The second aspect is the loot system. Whereas the dirty thieving scoundrel would pinch every damn coin for items and upgrades. Here, the loot can represent gold and resources um, that you can use to craft items, equipment, and also buildings. Um, at the start of the campaign, the settlement is in a state of disrepair. And with resources, you can upgrade and, and build structures for valuable bonuses that they'll give you. Um, these allow areas for crafting and even characters, once retired, can then set up shop in the settlement, which is, which is awesome. Time is a factor here with regards to the seasons. Uh, you start in summer and as scenarios are played, the words winter is coming uh, have never seen more fitting. Um, here enemies will attack, resources become more scarce and you're tasked with defending the settlement. Two of the starting characters um, do appeal to me. Uh, the first is the necromancer. You know, I'm thinking undead summons or drawing life from enemies with a type of regeneration ability. And the other is the Gemnate, um, represented by two models. And I assume due to the nature of this character, you only have one model on the board at any one time, but you can switch between the two models during scenarios or over the course of the campaign. Will I back this? I'm still not 100% sure. Uh, I'll likely have Gloomhaven complete by the time Frosthaven ships next spring, uh, but this will be another big investment in time. I did watch a playthrough hosted by um, Paul Grogan, uh, where the scenario had a, an elevated terrain mechanic. Uh, that was pretty cool. And from past reference, there was no doubt that Frosthaven would soar through the entirety of its campaign. And Isaac is the master of creating a world that you can easily immerse yourself in. It's highly likely that at some point I will own Frosthaven, um, either as a backer, during this campaign or as a retail purchase later. And the other game? Uh, well, last year I gained three games by this designer and all of them are great. Uh, they are 1066, Tears to Many Mothers, Gloom of Killforth and Lifeform. Each of these games is vastly different from each other, um, yet fantastic in their own unique way. And of course, the designer I speak of is Tristan Hall. 
I actually met him at UK Games Expo 2019, where he had a few copies of Gloom of Killforth left. Um, so I, I threw my money at him and I got myself two things. One was the game and the second was a photo with him, which made my day. Um, so his latest campaign is called Vale Wraith, a solo fantasy quest. This, guy, this game kind of crept up on me, but damn, it looks good. Uh, it's set in a colourless, gothic, apocalyptic world that is represented perfectly in the uh, turret-sized cards featuring this, this harrowing yet gorgeous artwork of varying shades of black and grey. Initially, it is a solo game um, set in the Gloom of Killforth universe. However, multiple copies of this game can be brought together um, for up to four players to enjoy. The game is uh, it's campaign based and played over a series of games um, and each of these, I think I pronounce it correctly, is called a vignette. Um, during a single game, five keys need to be gained as well as defeating all the foes um, that are contained in the threat deck, followed by the portal. And each round has five phases uh, where threat cards are drawn, players then uh, draw memories and take actions of their own. Um, then spirit, which I assume is equivalent to health, can be lost depending on the threat cards that are still in play, um, followed by an end phase before the next round begins. Um, during the play phase, players can play their memory cards for the printed abilities, um, and these memories can also be combined to add the power token values to the action cards that are laid out in front of you. And these action cards can also be used to load with power tokens to make their abilities uh, more powerful in later turns. The action cards, they can be used to fight, um, influence or explore, for example, and it's dependent on the uh, power equivalent to the card with the memories attached to it and any power tokens that have been previously paced. Lastly, any keys that you, you have um, can be played for abilities or flipped for a one-use special ability. And after this, any threat cards that are still in play, they eat away at the Veil Wraith spirit. Um, so these are two vastly different games um, that have caught my attention this month. Frosthaven is a mammoth campaign driven dungeon crawler where characters level up, upgrade, build structures in game that, re that requires um, time as a large investment, but does have plenty of rewards. The other Veil Wraith, is a game from a designer who has produced some solid games with uh, awesome uh, solo play. And this one has a haunting and sorrowful world with uniquely fantastic artwork. Uh, so there, I'm, I'm, I'm still deciding and I'll let you know uh, which one I back later. Um, so that's it for episode three from Ninja Geek. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking of backing any or, or and why or both. Um, I'd be interested to read that. Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah, 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 yeah.